excited. I don't even need to like hype the audience up anymore. I see some of you, you caught that, that's great. So we're here for our second panel, which I'm really excited about. Uh, someone that I am actually a big fan of, who you may have seen in a movie called Boondock Saints. Maybe, maybe you watch a show called The Walking Dead. I don't really think he needs introduction, so without further ado, I'd like to bring to the stage Norman Reedus! What's up? Good morning. Hi. How you doing? What's up? It's bright in here. Hi. It is. Love you too. Whoever says that. Hi. It is very bright in here. How's it going? It's good. It's freezing here. It it's is so very cold. cold in Chicago. Yeah, I have all my clothes on right now. Yeah. Everything he packed. Yes. Um, man, I have so many questions to ask you. I got so many fan questions, uh, most of them just asking, since it's the 28th anniversary of Boondock Saints, are we getting a Boondock Saints 3? Uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I, I think, uh, th I mean, there's talk of it every year, but I don't know where we're at with that right now. All right, we could just keep our fingers crossed. Uh, it's, yeah. your, it's, it's your your brother's birthday today, so. Yeah, happy birthday, Sean. Yeah. Um, yeah, you you really made this amazing career, and for some of us seeing you first in Boondock Saints, but you're on Charmed. You have done work in the horror genre, like across. You're a model. You're a painter. You're a sculptor. Like, literally, you've made this career. I do a lot of crap. You yeah. do? Yeah. Somehow, all on a motorcycle. Um... <laughs> You know, what's up? What Hi. is, what do you think on? in all of it has been the coolest, most memorable role to date that you've done? Oh, wow. Um, probably Walking Dead because, yeah, yeah, thank you. Because uh, uh, you have, you know, I've been on that show for 10 years, so you get to see the evolution of a character for 10 years in real time. Um, like these little gray hairs on my chin weren't there when we started, you know, so I, I like that, you know. Which is really cool. A lot of folks actually don't realize, but the character Daryl was created for you. Yeah. Um, which is amazing yeah, yeah. when you look at the evolution and the fact that the work that you did in the first season, which is a substantial lot of work when you're thinking about a, Carol that, a character that didn't exist yeah. previously, led into the evolution in season two, three, four, now into season 10. Congratulations, thanks, you made it. Yeah. yeah, thanks. You're one of the few that are still alive. Yeah, they had, um, say what? What? I'll be right there with you. I'll burn down that whole damn studio. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that character, uh, yeah, like Fra Frank made that character for me. I, I originally auditioned for Merle, but I heard that Michael w Rooker was playing that part. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe, you know, he couldn't do it last minute or something. And, uh, and I, you know, I was living in New York, I was in Chinatown, and, I, and I, they brought me back in for like the fourth time. And they called me on the way home and they said, uh, oh, he wrote a character for you. Um, and I just did cartwheels the whole way home. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's wild to, to play a character for that long, because you, uh, you know, like, I remember the first, my first scene in that, in that show, they had, uh, you know, I come with the squirrels on a string, and, uh, you know, and I'm like, Merle, get down here, let's stew them up, and, uh, and I'm like, do you guys want, like, an overhand throw, or, like, an <laughs> underhand, you know, I was super nervous, and I... Uh, that cast had already been doing a bunch of press together for a long time, and they were all already really tight. And I was like, man, how am I gonna play this character? And I kind of, uh, I turned around, it, you know, cause Rick goes, oh, we locked your brother on a roof. And I kind of turned around and all these actors were like looking at me, like, what are you gonna do, new guy, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I had kind of like a chip on my shoulder, so I, 
you know, I'm kind of like, you know, you hate me, I hate you too. And, you, you know, I kind of played the whole character off my left shoulder. And uh, slowly as time happened, I kind of gradually squared up and would look them right in the face and uh, became like an honest dude. And, it, you know, so it was, it's nice seeing all the progressions of Daryl, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he's definitely become a fan favorite uh, on the show. Oh, thank you. The other thing that I'm, I'm very curious about, you're a huge motorcycle fan. Yeah, yeah. Did the motorcycle come before, or did Daryl get a motorcycle because you were a motorcycle fan? Uh, I think everybody knows I'm kind of scared of horses, right? <laughs> it's kind of a thing. And Sean used to make fun of me all the time back on Boondog Saints. But uh, that I had a scene early on where I was supposed to get on this horse and ride away. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And uh, there was a motorcycle sitting over there, a big chopper. And I was like, well, whose bike is that? And they go, that's your brother Merle's. And I'm like, well, you know, if Merle can ride, Daryl can probably ride. And they swapped it last minute. So I was like, whew, yeah. And there you go, avoiding yeah. horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, horses with their big eyeballs and they can smell your fear. Like, what the fuck, yeah. I mean, yeah. They are sentient. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I hear. I'm not into horses, yeah. But it really has evolved. Like, now you have a show on AMC, Ride. Congratulations on season oh, four. Thanks. Oh, You guys watch that? Oh, right on. Yeah. This season we just shot, it's really good. We went to, uh, uh, we went to Osaka and Kyoto and Rooker's on it. Uh, a, a bunch. It's really good. That, that show just keeps getting better and better. I think... When we first started it, it was kind of uh, like a gearhead show. Like this is uh, this motor and you know, whatever. And fans kept coming to wherever we were going and the, the show kind of loosened up, you know what I mean? It became more fun, you know? So right now we're, we're peaking, it's really good. It found its wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So is there for you in the you show? Know, you know uh, Ryan Hurst plays Beta? So I got him in a... Uh, in an elephant onesie, right? Riding this tiny little uh, like mini bike car, this little race car through the streets of Tokyo in the rain. It's, it's kind of funny just to see, cause he's like nine feet tall, crammed in this little car in an elephant outfit. So yeah, it's fun. I was gonna ask what was the most cool and memorable experience trip you've had, but I feel like this is. What, on ride? Yeah. Well, I, I got Marilyn Manson in a sidecar with full makeup on, and I kind of bounced him down the street through Nashville. That was kind of fun. Um, Rob Halford from Judas Priest was really cool. Yeah, he, he came downstairs. You know, I went to his house in Arizona, and he comes down the stairs in one of his giant leather rock and roll jackets um, that he's famous for, and he put one on me with all these like tassely bits, and I. Uh, and he goes, look in the mirror. And I, I, I looked in the mirror and he goes, turn around. And he had my angel wings from Daryl's vest on the back of the jacket. And he said, he's a big Walking Dead fan. And he said, when I ripped the, the vest back off of uh, Dwight, he like jumped up in the air and called his jacket maker in London and said, make me one with the Daryl wings. So I was like, aw, you know, Aww. it was pretty touching. Yeah. So you've been asked this question before, but in, now in the fourth season of Ride, do you feel like your opinion has changed of the perfect bike for the apocalypse? I, I mean, the, the bike I ride on that show is a dual sport bike, so you can, you can go out in the dirt or you can jump on the freeway. That's kind of what you want. And those, I, it's a Triumph Tiger, and it's super quiet. Yeah. So it's kind of good for a zombie apocalypse, I guess. Yeah. I remember the first, the first bike Daryl had on Walking Dead was uh, this chopper, this giant chopper. And, and it was, I think it was season three, maybe the first scene we shot was, was me on the bike like this, and, uh, and there's nobody out there, so a little skeleton crew, and, uh, and I'm sitting there thinking I look really cool on the bike, and this little bit of fat under my arm was like jiggling, <laughs> and I was like, damn it, you know? And, <laughs> and then the craziest part was they had, uh, there was a tornado. So, so they have a little walkie right here that I'm talking to the director. And I'm like, I can't see nothing because it's hailing in my face. And, uh, 
He's like, stop the bike, get off the bike right now, a van's picking you up. And then a van pulled up next to me and they go, get in the van, leave the bike here. And I was like, what's going on? And they go, a tornado's coming right at us. And they rushed me in the van, rushed me back to the studio and the trees had been knocked down on the way to the studio. Wow. So I was on the bike filming and a tornado was headed right towards me. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty wild. That's pretty yeah. wild. I've had a, a bunch of crazy, weird stories like that on the show. Yeah. It, it is like a show this, that I think would attract weird stories. Well, that, like this one time, I got hurt on set really bad and had stitches across my forehead. And so they raced me to the hospital. And I get to the hospital, and I'm covered in blood because it's The Walking Dead already. <laughs> and I come into the hospital, and uh, all the nurses are like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, because I have fake blood like all over my body. And they're, everyone's freaking out. And I, uh, and, and so they stitched me up right here, and then they kind of gave me the day off after that. And so I went back to the base camp, swapped my clothes, and then one of our, one of our Teamster drivers, this girl Nene, is driving me back to my house, and someone's following us with my car. And we come up over a hill, and there's a, uh, this is all on the same day, by the way. So we come up over a hill, and there's, a, there's an 18-wheeler on its side, and there's a lady in the middle of the road going, stop, I think he had a heart attack. And I guess because I was on like medication or something, I jumped out of the car, I ran over to the 18-wheeler, I climbed up the, up the side of the truck, and I pulled this big sweaty guy out of the truck, down on the ground, and I'm like, I'm like trying to talk to him. And then the ambulance comes, and they're like, didn't we just take you to the hospital? And I'm like, <laughs> and I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, but it's not me, it's him. And <laughs> and then I just, and then a bunch of people came with like cameras, so we got back in the in the van and went home. And I kind of forgot I did it. And I uh, and I get back to set the next day, and everyone's like, did you just jump out of the car and pull this guy out of a truck? And I was like, oh yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> like a lot of weird stories. That's yeah. how I imagine you react to everything that's big. You're just like, yeah, no, it happened. Yeah, my life is full of those, I think. Yeah, there's a bunch of stories. Yeah. So you've answered my other question. I had to know, do you own a car? Do I what? Do you actually own a car? I do, yeah. I have a 69 Camaro. Oh. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's so mean, that car, too. Like, uh, like uh, That's not just a car. That's a classic. Yeah. It was like, I mean, it's, it's dope, but it, it has an LS3 motor in it, so it's like super fast, but... There's a switch, so already it's like boom, 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 you know, but there's a switch, like, like if I pull up to a light and some guy's like ring, 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 and like, I hit a switch and it goes boom, 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 <laughs> you know, like the ground sort of starts to shake and they kind of back off a little. Oh, yeah. man. So I have a fan question. Yeah. So a lot of people have really speculated this concept of what would have happened to Daryl if Merle did not end up on that roof. Had it still been Merle and Daryl, you know, one of the, the questions that people are really curious, do you think, uh, Norman, think that, you know, would Daryl's storyline have ended up being different? Would he eventually have left with Merle from the group or would he have stayed and evolved in the way that he did? He would have just been an asshole, I think. Um, I mean, the whole deal was Merle and I, we were at that campsite to rob them. That's why we were playing along. Um, you know, they, they originally gave me scripts where I was like taking drugs and I was saying all this racist stuff and I was like mini Merle. And I, you know, I, I brought all the writers together and I was like, I, I don't wanna be that guy. Like, I wanna be the guy that grew up with that and is like ashamed of it. And, and, and what that did was it allowed, when Merle left the show, it allowed me to sort of step up and be the man that I wouldn't have been if that wouldn't have happened. So in a weird way, a zombie apocalypse uh, kind of blossomed Daryl out to be like a real guy. Like you gotta, you know, that show is like, you know, you have to, it's your two feet on the ground. You have to, it, you have to be the person that you wanna be. You have to fight for what you believe in and you have to walk away from certain things and it, it gives you the opportunity to, I mean, without all the pretense of everything that's a hang up nowadays or, or even, you know, whenever, but it, 
it, it allows you to, to, to step into your own shoes and, and if you're gonna be a hero, be a hero. If you're gonna be honest, you're gonna be honest. But it, by changing that storyline, it, it really gave me something to, to grow, to grow with, you know what I mean? In that vein, yeah. in that vein, do you have a favorite Daryl moment? Oh, so many of them. Yeah. You know, the, I think, I, I think Daryl became really popular in the Sophia storyline, you know, because, you know, a lot of the writers on the show, especially if we have like a new writer or something, they go, oh, Daryl's the guy over, you know, with the motorcycle and the crossbow, and he's over there growling, and he's, you know, hot-headed and stuff. And, but I think, you know, when Sophia was lost, and everyone gave up looking for Sophia except Daryl, uh, like he, he just wouldn't quit. So I think, you know, that character really wears his heart on his sleeve, and, and he means what he says, and, you know, if he falls in love, he's gonna fall in love forever, and I, I've said that forever, but it's, you know, that, when, you, when he showed heart, that's when people fell in love with that character, and that was, it's my favorite, my favorite uh, story, storyline as well. Speaking of falling in love. Uh oh. Um, there have been, there's just, Daryl just, he does wear his heart on his sleeve. There's been a lot of teases about Daryl's love life. Uh, or lack of, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah. And the new cat's out of the bag. Season has started. We've already been told that this season is going to revolve a lot around Daryl and Carol. Yeah. Um, there, are, uh, there are a lot of Carol, K-A-R-Y-L fans out there. Um, but you also kind of have uh, your heart and your hands full with Donnie. <laughs> yeah. So, um, for the, can, I know you can't tell us anything. The season just started. But, yeah. you know, what should we be looking forward to when it comes to the development of these two relationships? Because obviously, y'all have seen the first episode of the season, right? <laughs> there really is a lot of emotional teases in every which way. Also, I want to know, how does one sign with a southern accent? Well, that's a, that's a big question you have there. Um, you know, there is a lot of Daryl and Carol this year, like a lot of Daryl and Carol. Um, you know, those characters are so tight that... And they've really evolved. If there's any two yeah. characters that have had such a strong evolution yeah. since season one, it is Daryl and Carol. There's, there's, there's some moments and some lines in that first script that were my idea. Um, so we'll see where that heads. Uh, the Connie of it all, I think Connie, I, I think he, he sees her as an equal. She's an asset. She's a badass. She, you know, there's lots of times Daryl's like, I'm going to head this way. And, and she's like, I'm coming with you. And I'm like, no, you're not. She's like, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know I, and I like seeing that character branch out and yeah. put in the effort to be able to communicate with her. I think that's, that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. What was the last part? Well, I, so, and I love, I love that. I just want to remark on that. I'm going to ask the other part of the question again. Because we've been waiting for this kind of, it's been blossoming since the Cherokee Rose moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now you have another kind of love interest. We saw a little peek of a sign language book in the back of Daryl's in, in Daryl's pocket. I, I, you know, I don't know who, who knows how to do sign language here, but there's certain little things. If you do them wrong, they mean something totally different. So there's a, we did this we did this one scene, and it, I, I think I did, I raised instead of doing it from here, I did it from here, and then I did it from here. So this means bitch, right? <laughs> And this means bastard. So I'm like coming in, doing my thing, and I'm like, boom. And they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, what I do? What I do? And so everyone's kind of having a good laugh at my expense because I keep messing up. But uh, uh, it, I like her character. I like, I like my character. I like our relationship. Um, I like my relationship with Carol, of course. And that, that one gets really complicated this year, especially... Like, if you look at all the things that's happened to Carol, she's lost so much, you know? And 
it's she's become very damaged because of it. So there's a lot of that kind of a relationship happening this year. Um, and I love that that first scene with with the boat. I, I love the Ezekiel that conversation with Ezekiel on the thing talking about bat guana and all that stuff. Um, everybody's just really killing it this year. There's a lot of good character stuff this year. And we've been shooting nights for the past two episodes, which means I go to work at five and I come home at like eight in the morning. So I'm like a little out of it right now. Um, but yeah. You're holding it, it down though. Uh, am You're I? You're holding yeah. it down. I'm kind of asleep right now, but hi. Uh, so you did answer the question about how you sign with a Southern accent, clearly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm trying. You know, it's hard. It's harder. Sign, it's, it is. It is not easy, but yeah. it's good that you. I mean, I'm, it's such a amazing part to have that inclusion and yeah. to particular particularly have uh, performers who can sign on the show, and it says such. It sends such a strong message to who can survive the apocalypse yeah. and what strength looks like. Yeah. Um, because it is so much of understanding sound yeah. when it deals with zombies. Also vibration, you know, like there's stuff coming up that has to do with vibration, like, you know, putting your hand on the ground. And I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that you can learn to do, I think. And there's, those two girls, Kelly and Connie, have really mastered a lot of things that some of us would have taken for granted, I believe. You know? Yeah. So, for, for you, there are a lot of fans. As we said, Daryl is a fan favorite. Um, why do you think Daryl resonates so strongly with fans? And this is a fan question, so I want to uh, shout out to the fan who asked this. I, th I think because he's honest. I think he's, you know, he was an abused child. He's been through a lot. Um, I think he's a no bullshit guy. I think if you're gonna, if you want to put your put your faith in somebody to trust, he's a good one, you know, he, he won't lie to you, he, he just doesn't believe in lying, although he lies to Carol sometimes, and she's like, yeah, sure, but I know, I know she knows, I know, um, but, you know, like, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve, he'll fight to the end, he's, he's not trying to impress you, you know, he's, he's there to do a job, he's there to protect you, um, and he, he, if, you know, if you're his friend, like, you're always his friend, if, you're somebody he cares about, you can rely on him to be there, you know? So besides The Walking Dead, you have done some substantial voiceover work, you have done Voltron, you've played Frank Castle, The Punisher. Um, you know, what has been your experience doing voiceover performance acting versus what we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, a lot of your game work that Strand, you've done? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, what? Getting me dirty? What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's a Kojima thing. That's I never met him. I never met the Konami people. But that you know, Hideo's Hideo's a genius. I mean, he's like another level guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's like you know we. I, it's funny because Guillermo del Toro called me and he goes. I'm gonna introduce you to this guy, just say yes. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, just say yes. And I'm like, are you sure? And, and you know, Guillermo gave me my SAG card. He gave me my very first acting job. So, I, so I, have, you a, trust I have a soft spot for him, for Guillermo. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a genius too. And I, I can see why those two guys are friends, you know? Um, but the Hideo thing, there's like, like there's certain directors that, that see a certain scene a certain way. And if you try to add to it, they like short circuit. They're like, oh, you know, Hideo doesn't do that. He's like, yes, and then let's add this. And you're like, yes, and let's add that. And he's like, yes, and add this on top of that. Like, he, he's cool. He doesn't, he doesn't freak out, you know. He, his mind is always going forward. And, you know, it, it took me three years and over a hundred sessions of wearing that little blue leotard outfit with all those little balls on me and you're like you're covered in velcro so you're like sticking to everything you know and then i'm dancing around with like mads nicholson and leah sadu and we have these helmet things and they're banging into each other and you know all this stuff but i would i would do stuff with hideo you know 
like I'd take a drink of water and I'd like wipe it on my sleeve and he'd go, do it again and roll camera. And I'm like, what is he doing? And then, you know, I'd scratch my head and he could do that again, but on camera. And I'm talking to him and he goes, he goes, uh, I was like, so, so everyone's gonna play me in the game? And he goes, no, they will be you. And so he has all these little Norman things that Norman does as the character in the game because he wants you to, to really feel connected to a character. He doesn't want like just a regular character. He wants you to be emotionally involved in the character. And that's kind of the setup of the game. He's, it's not a, a kill them all game. It's a bring people together game. How he's, does he's, it, a, he's a visionary. How does it feel to literally, because that, that's very true, because in motion capture, like, you, it is your face, it is your body, it's your movements, it is your facial expressions. You are literally transposed into a game. Yeah. How does that feel to know that millions of people are going to be playing Norman, basically Norman Reedus in a game with, yeah. with a baby strapped on front of you? Yeah. You know what? I think early on, early on, I was like super nervous. Like, you know, like I didn't like my face. I didn't like my ears or I didn't like my voice. Or I walk funny or something. And I think Walking Dead be being such a phenomenon and, you know, I'm out there so much, like I just kind of gave up. I was like, like, who cares, you know? So the video, yeah, screw it. And the video game, it's such, I mean, you know, like I used to play like Defender and Pac-Man, like this ain't that, you know what I mean? Like, no. Yeah. no, far, far, far yeah. from that. But it's, it's so realistic, you know? And, you know, and you have to understand too, like I'm doing Walking Dead all the time. And then they, they're like, oh, you're off an episode. And then I'm flying to San Diego and then crack of dawn, I have this, all these dots on my face and this outfit and you know, and then they're like, okay, and you're gonna race to the airport and go right back to Walking Dead. So I, I look exhausted, like all the time, it's kind of like I do now. But if you worry about it, yeah, right. But if, if, if you worry about all that stuff, uh, it's, you're not given an honest performance, you know? And like, I remember, uh, you know, what do you call those? GIFs or GIFs or whatever, like, and, and, you know, I stab Merle in the face and I'm like bawling like a baby. And then all of a sudden, like, my cry face is everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell, right? And I'm like, maybe I should just like pose cry from now on and like look cool and cry. But then, all the actors would be like, you're posing. So it's like, I gotta pick my battles, you know? So the video game is like super realistic, like, you know? It's incredible. Looking yeah. at the pro looking at the teasers, looking at the promos, this idea of the supernatural, because it, while it is a departure from The Walking Dead, yeah. you're still kind of dealing with supernatural, you know? Yeah. A lot of folks, if, if you, do folks know about Death Stranding? I just wanted to make sure you know we had switched off The Walking Dead. Um, Dude, he like, he took me to those game awards and he's like walking downstairs and the stairs are lighting up as he steps on them like Michael Jackson, right? And, and he goes, I'm back. And like 10,000 screaming males were like, ah! You know, and I'm he's like- He's a legend. I'm like, who is this guy, you know? And then walking around Tokyo with him, like, it's nuts. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's the real deal, yeah. Well, well, he is a legend, and now you're kind of a part of this brand new, and so many, as much as people know about the game, they know so little about the game, right? Yeah. You're playing Sam Bridges, you're fighting Supernatural, you have a baby strapped to you because it helps you figure out when there's supernatural things happening, and you're trying to bring the world together. It's, yeah, you know, it's, it's in a world that's much like today's world, and the idea of touch is kind of something that that character can't deal with. Mm. And that, the baby I, is a tool. I can see things with the baby, and as the, you know, as the game proceeds and you, know, you finally get into it, the idea of touch comes back to Sam and the idea of caring for this comes back to Sam. So as 
you as a player play the game and you're connecting and you feel the connection, you start to feel human emotion at the same time for the character as the character and as you connect with other people in the game. It's, mm -hmm. it's a different kind of concept. It's, it's very bold. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to fans experiencing in the game? You're just gonna get lost in this world. It's, it's um, first off, the graphics are crazy. It's like mind-blowing graphics, but it's, you get a most, you know, you know that singer Grimes? You know, you guys, you know that Grimes? Yeah, she's, I mean, like super smart, right? And Hidia, while we were doing the game, would have all these superstars come just to shake his hand and hang out, and like rock star status. And Grimes was, I was talking to her about, you know, why she was so into games like this. And she says, well, I read a lot. And it's the combination of, of being submersed in a game world but with the story of a really good novel. So it's, mm -hmm. you, it's, you know, it, it's not a, you know, plug in and just blow everybody away and try to get the biggest score. It's like, it's an experience, you know? Yeah, there's a, I mean, and that, I think that's the thing that so many folks, and honestly, from the folks I've talked to, are looking forward to the game because there is so much of an in-depth story yeah. um, that folks will get. Uh, two more questions. Hit me. Do you feel like there are similarities between Sam Bridges and Daryl Dixon? And Daryl? Um, no. Other than it's my face. But, um, not at all. Um, maybe, maybe season 10 Daryl more than season nine and down. Um, there's a reluctancy. There's like an anti-hero type thing about him. Uh, so there is that, but, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, <laughs> it probably is, yeah, I take it all back, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. you have made a, a beautiful career out of being an anti-hero that yeah. also establishes this very strong sense of loyalty yeah. and, and sticking to what is right, uh, yeah. so that's, that's pretty incredible that you get to continue that mm -hmm. into perpetuity in a game, that's yeah. pretty awesome. I've, I've been pretty lucky uh, that... Yeah, I guess so, yeah, you're right, yeah. I guess you say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's saving all the energy for autographs and photos, y'all. Uh, last question. Yeah. Is there anything else coming around the horizon that folks should be looking out for from you, besides, obviously, artwork up in museums and in studios around the world? Yeah, I'm working on another book right now. Um, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I have a show in Paris coming up. Uh, uh, yeah, big, a big show in Paris. Um, yeah, I got like 20,000 things happening right now. Um, but I, I, I hope you're excited for The Walking Dead because this season is freaking crazy. Like, I mean, yeah. it's so good this season. And it, uh, there, there are things that are going to happen this season that are like mind blowing. And the sets are huge. And uh, it's just nuts. Like, Everybody on our crew who have been there for 10 years are freaking out over this season. And they're kind of hard to phase because they're there every single day. But it's, it's nuts. This season's a whole brand new thing. I think Angela King is doing a great job as the showrunner this season, yeah. If you could sum this season up in one word, what would it be? Oh my god, uh, combustible. How's that word? Combustible? Uh, yeah, it's, the whole thing's flammable. Well, we did start off with a fire in the first episode, so oh, boom. Uh, just wait. It gets really crazy. All right. Well, thank you so much. Get another round of applause for Norman Reedus. Well, thank you. Thanks for putting up with me. Nice to see everyone. So y'all all know how this works. We're going to get a picture with all of you. So if you could all please stand up for me. What? What are we doing? <laughs>